Good day, Grade Twelves. Welcome to Friday's lesson. Well done on surviving the week. I'm pretty chuffed that we've managed to survive the week. Um, and today we're going to carry on with circle geometry. I know that I said to you that I would be giving you a live assessment and showing you how to do the live assessment, but it's been pointed out to me that quite a few of you access the, the system through school. And then, so it seems very silly for me to be giving you a live assessment and then you can't get at it because it's the weekend and therefore you can't answer the questions. So what we've decided to do is I'm going to um, upload it and make it active on Monday. And then I'll leave it up for two days and then I'll have a look at it and then we can have a gander at what you guys understand and don't understand and then we can solve the issues. Okay, so one of the students, you know who you are, very politely asked me about this question yesterday and pointed out that I cannot add, which is totally correct. So my apologies, 84 plus 84 does not give you 164, it gives you 168 and therefore the answer here is 12. So I apologize profusely for the um, very bad maths, um, but I'm very happy that you caught the error and um, I'm very grateful. So thank you for letting me know, guys. I really appreciate that. I'm, I'm only human. I do make mistakes. So the more that you're following this and you realize that I've made mistakes and you correct me, I'm not aiming to make mistakes, please understand. But if I do, then I will go through it with you and make sure. Okay, now yesterday I also, oopsie, sorry, I also showed you this diagram and we did the first one which was FOGE is a cyclic quad and then I asked you to prove that EG is a tangent to the circle of GGK, GJK and then we'll carry on. So after talking to you about it last thing, I was busy making this PowerPoint and I looked at it again and realized that I had kind of misled you and that it's actually really easy to prove that EG is a tangent to the circle GJK. So I'm going to do that now for you and then see there is a longer way to do it which is the way that I was aiming for but there's also a nice short way. So bear with me and I'll show you the short way and then we can all kick ourselves. So we've just proven that F O, G, E is a tangent. We know that this is X because they gave it to us. We know that this is 2X because of the fact that this is the center of the circle and angle of center is twice the angle of circumference. We also know that this angle is X because of the fact that this is um, the exterior angle equals the interior opposite angle. Um, or sorry, is a tan chord theorem. Sorry, tan chord theorem. And we know that this is x because of the fact that that's a tan chord theorem. And what we needed to try and prove, we now need to so prove that this is a cyclic quad because of the fact that the whole of this was. Oh, sorry, I don't know. The whole of this was 90. And the whole of this is 90. So that's 90. Okay, do you agree? So that's 90 there and that's 90 there. Now I'm going to point something out to you which I totally disregarded yesterday. And the fact is that this year is parallel to that line there. Okay, do you see it? That there is parallel to that there. So therefore, can you see that we can say that the whole of this angle is equal to the whole of that angle there? Okay. Or we could say that the whole of this angle is equal to the whole of this angle there. Okay. So we now need to prove that EG is a tangent to the circle GJK. EG is a tangent to the circle G. J, K. Sorry, I just needed to. There we go. Um, so, what do we know? Okay, so if you look at this, do you agree that that is X there? That's 90 over there. So this angle here is 90 minus X. And that little over there is 90 minus X, which makes sense for the simple reason that if that's 2X, this is 180 minus 2X divided by 2. Okay, so... Do you agree that I could get, and again, 
I'm being silly. Um, let me show you. Do you agree that not only do you get alternate angles, but the other shapes you get are shapes called fun? F. So this angle here is equal to that angle there, right? So this angle is also X. So that, and the reason for that is because these two lines are parallel. And therefore we've proven that EG is a tangent to circle GJK. And why? Because if those two are equal, but they also follow the rule of the tan chord theorem, then the EG has to be a tangent. Okay, so the way you'd write that is you'd say that K1 equals X, Y, it's corresponding angle, corresponding angle, um, and it is um, Y because FH is parallel to EK. And then what you can say is, but K1 is equal to E, G or G1 is equal to G1. And why is K1 equal to G1? Well, G1, in case we haven't already said it, I can't remember if we proved it already, but if we haven't, we need to say that this is the tan chord theorem. Okay, the tan chord theorem, that is equal to X because of tan chord theorem. Therefore, um, we can say therefore that EG is a tangent to circle GJK. Nice and easy here if you just think about it. Right, and then finally, the final question was to prove that, oh, let me just erase all the writing. Prove that angle FEG equals 180 degrees minus 2x. Okay, and that was actually really easy. We've already proven that F O G E G is a cyclic quad. We've already proven that. We know that this is angle is 2x. Why? Because that's the center of the circle. So you could say that O 1 equals 2x, y angle at center equals 2 times angle at circumference, okay? And therefore, angle FEG has to equal 180 degrees minus 2x, opposite angles of cyclic quad um, cyclic quad F O F O G E. And there you go. And that's how you prove it. Okay, so that's not too bad here. Not too bad at all. Right, now we're going to carry on doing these questions, like I said. And I would like you to do as my other student did, or what, as a student was obviously doing that was working through it with me, is to work, good with, work through it with me and make sure you understand exactly what I'm saying and what I'm doing. And then um, if you miss anything, feel free to go back and check what mistakes, not what mistakes, what I've done, and check that you've understood it. Um, and then if you have, that's great. And if you haven't, then stop the video at the beginning of the question, like I always say, like, yeah, stop it here. And then read through it, try it for yourself. Um, and then see if you can find a way of, a better way of doing it. Okay, so it says here, in the diagram below, A, B, and D, C are chords of the circle. Okay, so we've got A, B, and D, C are chords of the circle. E is a point on A, B, so it's just some random point. But they tell you that B, C, D, E is a parallelogram, so we know that that is parallel to that, that is equal to that, that is equal to that, and that is parallel with that. Okay, they also tell you that angle DEB is 108 degrees and that DAE is 2x plus 40, 2x plus 40. And they want us to know, want us to calculate, giving the reasons, the value of x, the value of x. Okay, now I know that we know that this thing here is a parallelogram. Okay, B, C, D, E. But do you agree that if we look a little bit further, we can see that this thing here is a cyclic quad. 
There are four points, and all four points are on the circumference. Therefore, we can say that, that there is a cyclic quad. So do you agree that what do we know about cyclic quads? Opposite angle cyclic quads are supplementary. So therefore, angle C is equal to 180 degrees minus 2x plus 40 degrees. Now, you might be wondering why am I trying to get angle C? Well, I know that opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. So if I can get the value of C, then obviously I can get the value with respect to E. So I can get the value of X because the whole of C is going to equal E. Do you understand? So then I'm sorted. Okay, so let's do that. So we've got C is equal to 180 minus 2x plus 40. Please remember to put your brackets in, otherwise you're going to screw up. Or so you may mess up. Sorry. And what might happen is you get, you might mess up your minuses and you might end up with the wrong number. So we need to write that like that. So that becomes 140 degrees minus 2x. Okay. Now that is equal to 180 degrees. Why? But this is equal to angle E. Why? Opposite angles of a palm are equal. And I forgot to put my reason in here. And what was that? Opposite angles of a cyclic quad are what? They are supplementary. Okay, so therefore we can say that 140 degrees minus 2x is equal to 108 degrees. And then we can just solve. We can go 140 minus 108 is equal to 2x. So uh, I'm scared to do this now after last time, but I think it's 22 degrees. <laughs> okay, is equal to 2x. Therefore I can say x is equal to 11 degrees. Okay, there we go. I might be wrong. I think there might be 32. It is 32. Oh, my hat. I'm having a bad day. That's 32, so therefore that's 16. <gasps> Sorry, guys. Blonde award. And no offense to any blondes out there. My mom's a blonde. I'm a blonde wannabe. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, right. So, my apologies. Okay, everybody understand that. So, you need to know, even though this is, that's grade 10 work, you need to know your properties of your parallelograms. You need to know your properties of your rhombi, your kites, your triangles, all of that, because it all comes into play with metric geometry, specifically circle geometry. Right, now it says, you've got a circle with center O. Okay, as you O. It passes through A, B, C, and D. It tells you that A, B is parallel to D, C. Okay. I don't know why this is happening. I'll have to find out. And they tell you that angle B, O, C is 110 degrees. That's what's given. Okay, that is what is given. Okay, so we now need, there you go, it's a bit better. They tell you that chords AC and BD intersect at E, so just cut, randomly cut, and all the other lines are joined. Okay, now it says, calculate the size of the following angles, giving reasons for your answers. Okay, so I need some of the colors. So let's choose red. Okay, so I know that this is 110 degrees, and I want angle D, Okay, so that angle should be fairly easy to get for the simple reason that do you agree that D is at the circumference and it is subtended by B and by C. So D is subtended by angle B and by angle C, right? But these two points also subtend O, which is at the center of the circle. So do you agree we can say that D equals 55 degrees? Why? Because the angle at the center equals two times the angle at the circumference. Okay, so therefore this is 55 degrees. Okay, awesome. Now let's look for A. So I'm going to change color again so you can see what we're doing. We're looking for angle A. This one, yeah. 
Okay, so this is kind of a revision question of all the type of sums we've done before, because this is also using another theorem that we've done a while back, okay? We have just worked out D, and remember I said to you that if possible, it would be better if you could try and do these questions in the order that they come in, for the simple reason that it often means that they want you they, that you're going to need the stuff above. So we've just proven that D equals 55 degrees. Okay, now they're asking you for A. Okay, so A is also at the circumference. So do you agree that if I take it down, I can see that it joins the circle, the circle there B, and it joins the circle here at C. So see, so can you see that if so can you see that it is subtended by BC, but so is D. D is subtended by BC. So therefore, I can say that A is 55 degrees. Why? Because of equal angles subtended by equal arc. So it's equal angles subtended. I can actually say by same chord in this case, by same chord. Another way that people write this is they sometimes say equal angles in same segment. So if you see that in the memo, that's the same rule, okay? And your teacher might call it the butterfly theorem because they say, well, this is one wing of the butterfly and this is the other wing of the butterfly. Okay, so now we've done that. Now we want angle E2. Okay, another color coming up. And let's get green. So we want angle E2. Hmm. Okay, so that's not at the center of the circle. Okay, do you agree? And so therefore we can't say that that's 110 degrees. And we also can't say that anything about it with respect to E1 or E3 yet. So, but we do notice that it's the exterior angle of triangle ABE, but it's also the exterior angle triangle of CDE. And what we haven't used yet is the fact that AB is parallel to DC. So if AB is parallel to DC, do you agree I can say that this angle here is 55 degrees? Okay. This angle here is also equal to 55 degrees, but I've decided to go with this one. So B1 is equal to 55 degrees. Why? Because it's alternate. So to get to E2, I need to say that angle B1 is equal to 55 degrees. Why? Because it's alternate angles, right? And then I can say, well, E2 is the exterior angle which equals the sum of the two interior angles of that triangle. So I can say E2 is equal to 55 degrees plus 55 degrees, which equals 110 degrees. And why? Because the exterior angle equals the sum of the two in opposite angles. Okay, right. Okay, not too bad. So that's E2. Now they say, change color again. What color should we go for? Um, okay, let's go for dark blue. They say prove that BEOC is a cyclic quad. So the first thing I'm going to do is fill this in. BEOC. So in other words, they want some form of circle that goes B E hmm, E. O C. So we've got no tangents and we've got no external chords. But what do we know? We've actually used what we're going to use now before in this question. We've just used it to prove a number. Okay, we know, we've just proven that this angle here is 110 degrees. We were given that this is 110 degrees. Okay, so do you agree that E2 is subtended by BC and O1 is subtended by BC? So that means they're both subtended by the same chord. 
Okay, therefore we can say that because this rule works, that has to be a cyclic quad. Okay, does everybody understand that? So what I would say is E2 equals O1, and I would write proved above, proved above, okay? Therefore, um, I say, and I'd go, but they are equal angles in same segment therefore uh, B E O C is a cyclic quad okay so that's the inverse or the corollary of the theorem so basically what we're saying is that we can take the fact that this angle here is equal to that angle and because they are both subtended by B C we can say, well, in that case, if they're obeying this rule, yeah, that the angles are tended by the same chord in a cyclic quad, therefore, this must be a cyclic quad. Okay, next question. Right, we've got in the diagram A, B, C, D, and E are points on the circumference such that A, E is parallel to B, C. Okay, wait, let's just do this. So we've got A, B, C, and D. And E, a point on the circumference circle such that AE is parallel to BC, right? B, E, and C, D are produced, B, E, and C, D are produced to meet at F. GBH, GBH is a tangent to the circle at B. Angle B1 is 68 degrees and angle F, the whole of angle F is 20. Okay, now it says determine the sides of each of the following. And they want angle E1. Angle E1. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I want to erase this horrible ink and make it nicer. Okay, so that line there is much nicer, is it? It's parallel to that line. We want angle E1 this angle here. We know that that is 68 degrees. Okay, so we've been told that this is a tangent, right? We know that this whole angle is 68 degrees and that is its chord. And what is it subtending? It's subtending in angle E1. It's subtending angle E1. So do you agree? I can say, well, angle E1 i write it in black so you can see it. Angle E1 is 68 degrees. Why? Because the tan chord theorem. So you could actually say angle E1 is equal to angle B1, which is equal to 68 degrees. Why? Because of the tan chord theorem. Okay, so now we've got that that's 68. Now they want the angle B3. So we want this dude here. B3. Okay, well that shouldn't be too difficult for the simple reason, if you look carefully, we've been given parallel lines. We know that this line here is parallel to this line. And again, I stress grade 12s that they ask you to work out E1, then they ask you to work out B3. There's a very, very high chance that you are going to need E1 to be able to solve B3. Okay, so E1 is equal to 68 degrees. It is alternate. AE is parallel to BC, so it is alternate, forms a beautiful Z. So therefore, B3 has also got to equal 68 degrees. So we could say B3 is equal to E1. Why? Because alternate angles, okay, which is equal to 68 degrees. Okay. Now they want E2, the studio. They want E2. Huh, how are you going to get E2? Let's think about that. Okay, let's think. We've got a tangent. We've got that that's 20 degrees. We've got a cyclic quad. 
put a triangle. Hmm. Okay, let's read our information again and see. It says they've got A, B, C, D, whatever, so it's an cyclic quad. We've got that A, E is parallel to B, C. We know that um, G, B, H is a tangent, and we know that B, 1 is 68 degrees, and we know that angle F is 20 degrees. Angle F is 20 degrees. Ah, okay. So, do you agree that we've been... We, don't have any other information that's useful except for the fact that angle F is 20 degrees. So now I'm starting to think how I'm going to relate the fact that angle F is 20 degrees and what I just worked out to be able to work out that. And I realized that there's this beautiful big triangle, really stunning triangle, right? So what I can do is I can use the triangle to find angle C, and then what do we know about opposite angles of cyclic quad? They are supplementary. So let's do that. So I know that angle C, and I'm going to write it down here because of the fact that immediately they asked us to work out angle C there later, but it doesn't matter. Oh, hang on, sorry. I'm jumping. They've asked us to work out D1 first. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's easier. Okay, that's much easier. Okay, so let's do that. Okay. Okay. Sorry, that's much easier. Oh, why didn't you guys stop me? <laughs> Only kidding. Okay, right. They ask us to work out D1. Well, that's pretty easy because this year is a cyclic quad. Look here. They've got B, E, C, D. It's all a cyclic quad. And what do you know about the exterior angle of a cyclic quad? Well, we know that the exterior angle of a cyclic quad is equal to the interior opposite angle. So therefore, that has to be 68 degrees. 68 degrees. So D1 is equal to B3. Why? Exterior angle equals the int opposite angle. Right, now they want E2, and that's even easier now because E2, E2 is the exterior angle again, but this time it's to a triangle, and that means that the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two interior opposite angles. So E2 is equal to 68 plus 20, which equals 88 degrees, and that is exterior angle equals the sum of two int opposite angles. Okay, and finally, they want angle C. So wait, let me just write this down. This is angle 88 degrees. And finally, they want angle C. Well, we've already mentioned the fact that C is part of the cyclic quad. There's B, C. D and E, and opposite angles of the cyclic quad are supplementary. So we can say that angle C is equal to 180 degrees minus 88 degrees, which is going to be 92 degrees. And then you can say it's opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary. There you go. Sure. Okay. So, yeah, you could have gone straight to E2 and could have gone straight to C, but it's nice that they laid out the order that we have to do it in. Okay. So, get grade 12, please notice that I've been using all sorts of colors. Um, if you look at this pen, it does have an option of a highlighter. Hang on, let me just show you. Wait, where is it? Point to options, highlighter. And then I could highlight the things like this, okay, like you would do in the exams. The only problem is then I have to keep changing things to pen, and I really don't feel like doing that, which is why I'm just drawing everything in my pen, okay? Um, 
but if you're in exams and you have a highlighter, then I would really suggest you highlight the different sections so that you can get an idea. Um, I know that some people find the highlighting a bit irritating, so you have to work through and practice what makes it work for you. Also note in the tests and exams that they give you two of these pictures. The one is actually on the exam paper and the other one's in the diagram sheet. So you've got two that you can draw on. <laughs> okay, right. So don't panic too much about that. You've always got two. And then, of course, you could always redraw it or ask your teacher for some more copies, although in the final exam, they won't give you that. Okay, so that's that question. Let's have a look at another one. Now it says, in the diagram, O is the center of the circle. Width of the circle, H-E-A-T-R. H-E-A-T-R. Okay, AOF is parallel to EH. Okay, so I'm actually going to use the highlighter just for fun. And it's, what does it say? It says AOF, the studio, is parallel to EH. Okay, they are parallel. Then it says that F2 is equal to 78 degrees. So this angle here is 78 degrees. And they tell you angle R1 is 22 degrees. R1, this angle here, is 22 degrees. So the first thing they're asking you for is the angle O1. Okay. And the angle O1 